Beardo Benjo. I love VR. Yes, I know, that's a very obvious statement from a content creator who effectively just makes VR content these days and is always playing VR games. But nonetheless, it is true, I do love VR and I love everything to do with that technology and this area of the gaming medium. Sadly though, that statement isn't shared and embraced by the wider gaming community at large. There are still many, not just gamers, but developers, publishers, journalists, who still consider VR to be something of a gimmick and don't give it the attention and respect that it necessarily deserves to help it grow and become something even bigger for the future of the industry. Those mixed messages about VR coming from the gaming industry must be bizarre to see from someone sitting on the outside, because people like me are extremely passionate about VR. And then you have others that say, ah, it's a gimmick, it's not worth it. If you're sitting out there thinking, should I buy a VR headset? Should I make the investment? Then this video is for you. These games are what I consider to be the very best VR games out there. Absolutely sublime experiences that completely sell the technology and show that it is something worth supporting and worth growing for years to come. Before I dive into it, these are all just personal opinions. I've played a huge amount of VR games over the years and I continue to play them and I'm sure my opinion will evolve as time goes on, but these are the ones that I consider to be the very, very best. The creme de la creme, the cream of the crop. Just outstanding titles that if you were brand new to VR are the ones you should go to first and just let yourself fall in love with what VR can do. Be transported to different worlds and experience things that traditional gaming doesn't let you experience. I hope you enjoy taking a look at them. If you do, hit like, leave a comment and subscribe, all that good stuff. But for now, let's jump in and look at what I consider to be the very best VR games out there. Whether you're playing PlayStation VR, Oculus Quest, Oculus Rift, Vive, Index, it doesn't matter. These are the key experiences. Number 20, Robo Recall. Now, Robo Recall came out way back in 2017, three years ago now, blimey, and it was developed by Epic Games. Robo Recall is effectively iRobot, the game. You've been tasked with hunting down, dismantling, and stopping rogue robots who have been affected by a virus that was spread, and it's turned them all into kind of they're sentient now, they're fed up of being controlled, and they're coming for you. The game puts you in a first-person shooter perspective. You can dismantle, you can shoot, you can grab. And although it's three years old, this game still holds up now. It has a quest version, which is Robo Recall Unleashed, I believe. And genuinely, it really does still hold up. The only thing with this game is there's no locomotion movement. It's teleport only, but there is a mod for a workaround on PC VR, but don't let that stop you from trying it out. Robo Recall still holds up and it's still an absolute blast to play. One of the best first person shooters in VR and a great showcase, an early showcase for what the tech could do. In at number 19 is the absolutely magical first person, third person adventure Moss. Now I say first person, third person because you're seeing the game through the eyes of a being that is actually there. So technically it's a first person game, but you're controlling Quill on his quest as a third person game. Don't let that confuse you too much. Effectively, you're seeing the game through the eyes of a giant sentient being and Quill can see you and will often interact with you. You're helping Quill to save his kingdom on this magical quest. You get sucked into a storybook at the start. Honestly, it's absolutely sublime third person puzzle based action platforming, but you're seeing it as if you were right there looking into the world, looking down on this fantastical place and you get so attached to Quill. That little mouse is adorable and you will be wanting to see him have a happy ending immediately from the first second you meet him. Moss is absolutely fantastic, completely magical and well worth your time. At number 18, a bit of a sore spot for many PC VR gamers, Resident Evil 7. Now this was an exclusive for PlayStation VR and honestly it was absolutely fantastic. In my opinion it's the best way to experience this game. Horror games in VR are fantastic anyway, they genuinely are. You feel like you're thrust into a world filled with fear and things that traditionally wouldn't make me jump on a flat screen are terrifying when they're there in 3D in full scale creeping around the corner. So Resident Evil 7, for me anyway, was one of the first great horror experiences I played in VR. It's a damn shame it never came to PC. 
I have no doubt that it would run on Oculus, of course it would. It would run on Vive. There's no reason it doesn't exist on PC, but it has remained a PlayStation exclusive, which is a huge shame, but that doesn't detract from just how good Resi 7 is in VR. The game itself is fantastic, but play it in VR? It just takes everything up to 11, and it really is the ultimate way to experience that game. In at number 17, we effectively have Gravity the game. If you've seen Gravity, you'll know that that was a toe-curling experience of a space adventure gone wrong, and this is no exception. Lone Echo. Now, Lone Echo is the single-player equivalent of Echo Arena, which is a hugely popular multiplayer game in VR. Lone Echo sits you aboard a space station and you play as a robot assistant to Olivia, I believe her name is. I haven't played it in a little while, but I love the experience. It's not for the faint of heart. Being out there in space in some of the sequences is pretty full on, but if you want to experience something like gravity and feel like you're actually there and feel the fear of being aboard a space station as things start to really go wrong, Lone Echo is a dramatic, cinematic, and genuinely enjoyable experience. At number 16, we have more robots. Lots of VR games are about robots. Uh, this one is Stormland, and honestly, this one took me ages to get around to playing. I didn't realize this was actually made by Insomniac. The same guys, the same team who made Ratchet and Clank, Spider-Man, and most recently, Miles Morales. Now, Stormland is another first-person action game that's packed to the brim with gorgeous visuals. You're on a quest to save your friends who have been captured as you augment yourself and kind of upgrade your robot abilities. You effectively play as Johnny Five. I always thought the main character looked a bit like Johnny Five, but a completely badass version. If you don't know who Johnny Five is, please Google Johnny Five and then go and watch his films. They're absolutely fantastic. Stormland is a wonderful experience with great visuals, chunky combat, and fantastic locomotion. And to top it all off, it's made by one of the best devs in the business right now. Insomniac absolutely killing it and embracing VR as a technology that should be explored and should be celebrated. Up next, number 15 is Job Simulator. I don't think I've ever laughed as hard in a video game as I did the first time I sat and played Job Simulator. What a ridiculous concept for a game and an absolutely hilarious one. Effectively, it's a giant sandbox where you pretend to be at work. Doesn't sound interesting, but my word, is it hilarious. I remember losing countless hours playing this with friends when I first got VR. The office scenario still stands heads and shoulders above the other scenarios, but everything in there is an absolute joy. It honestly sounds like the worst pitch for a video game ever, where you pretend to go to work, but it really is absolutely sublime. Once you get in there and start playing around with all the silly mechanics, you'll be hooked and hours will fly by before you've even realized. It's a great game um, and it's especially great for younger audiences as well. One of the only games on this list that's kind of suitable for everybody. Hilarious, brightly colored, easy to play, easy to understand, Job Simulator is an absolute joy. Another one of the OG VR titles now, something that's been around for a little while but still absolutely holds up to today. Number 14 is Budget Cuts. Now, Budget Cuts felt like Valve making a VR game before Valve actually made a VR game. It felt like Portal mixed with Splinter Cell, an action stealth game where you genuinely snuck around an office complex trying to avoid your robot overlords. I remember the first time I played this game and it felt like I was literally living the scene in the Matrix where Neo is in the office complex and he gets the call from Morpheus and he's trying to sneak around past the agents. It's basically that with robots that want you dead. Um, it's, it's joyous. It's very hard, I think. To this day, I still think it's a pretty hard game, but I'm not good at stealth games in general. I really hope they take some of the stealth mechanics in this and apply that to Splinter Cell that we're getting next year. It, it's a joy, it's terrifying, it's colorful. It's worth checking out, budget cuts. It has had a sequel as well, but I haven't played that yet. In at number 13, love them or hate them, here's Bethesda with Fallout 4 in VR. Now, I know most people have a very Marmite relationship with Bethesda. I am a big fan of the Fallout games. Not so much Fallout 76, don't speak to me about that one, but Fallout 3, Fallout 4, less so, Fallout New Vegas, very much so. I love the games. And you can't help but admire the fact that Fallout 4, in its absolutely massive glory, is fully playable in virtual reality, thanks to Fallout 4 VR. Nothing is cut out. You can explore that entire wasteland, every quest, every nook and cranny, all the base building. It's all there for you to experience in virtual reality. Yes, 
it's a little bit wonky, but what Bethesda game isn't? To have this open world and all this content in a VR title is mind-blowing, and I have to commend them for it because it's a fantastic way to experience Fallout 4. In at number 12 is PlayStation's answer to Mario, and I genuinely believe the platforming in this game is good enough to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mario. Astro's rescue mission in PlayStation VR needs to be played by everyone with a PlayStation VR headset. It sucks that this game isn't multi-platform. I wish it was on PC for PC VR players to experience. What a joyous third-person VR game. The worlds look stunning. The platforming is perfection. The collectibles are addictive and the music is so, so catchy. This little robot might have captured the hearts of everyone on PS5 this year in Astro's Playroom, but he won me over a long time ago in Astro's Rescue Mission on PSVR. If you have PSVR and haven't played this game, honestly, it's the one game I genuinely think you should definitely invest in on that system. It's a joyous platforming adventure. It feels so fresh and it genuinely can compete with the quality of Mario in my humble opinion. In at number 11 is Arizona Sunshine. I love a good zombie game. I'm a sucker for horror games in general, but zombies are a real soft spot of mine, and Arizona Sunshine remains to this day to be one of the best co-op VR experiences I've ever had. The gunplay is absolutely fantastic, extremely tight, especially when you're using sniper rifles. Picking off zombies from a distance, it really does feel great. And it's got some exceptionally tense moments Two, I will always remember, one in a very dark cave system where the zombies felt like they were never going to stop coming for me, and a second on a long kind of bridge and you're making your way down the bridge, killing zombies as you go. It's it's a joyful zombie slash em up, shoot em up. Arizona Sunshine also has one of the most unique horror game settings I've ever played, which is a sun-drenched desert for the most part. Usually horror games stick you in the darkest, dankest place, but to do this and to throw all these zombies at you in broad daylight and you still feel terrified because they're genuinely quite scary when they're coming for you in large numbers, it's a testament to how good the game is and how fun it still is to play to this very day is, is just wonderful. Give it a go, Arizona Sunshine, it's on every platform. No excuse not to try it. Hey look, number 10, Bethesda are back again with Skyrim VR. Now I've placed Skyrim VR higher than Fallout VR because although it's an older game, it's a much nicer world to explore in VR. Fallout 4 is pretty much just a brown, desolate, post-apocalyptic wasteland, but Skyrim has some of the most luscious, wonderful environments still to this day. Even though they can't compete graphically with newer games, it still has just some of the nicest environments to explore in gaming. Walking around them in VR and just breathing it all in with a bow and arrow in hand, because honestly that is the best way to play this game. I never used bow and arrow on the flat screen version, but throw me into VR and I was legolas. I was taking people out left, right and center. But being able to explore the entirety of Elder Scrolls Skyrim, much like Fallout, is incredible that they've given us that experience in VR and it's testament to the fact that it can be done. If developers want to put the time in to make their games fully explorable, fully playable in VR, they can do. Bethesda have done it here and they've shown that it really, really works. It's just whether the payoff is big enough for them. I'd love to see more big AAA games like this completely playable in virtual reality. Getting stuck straight back into some more zombie action now. Zombies, Skyrim, zombies. We have in at number nine, Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. I had exceptionally low hopes for this game. I really thought it was going to come out and not do much. Because traditionally, film-based games and TV-based games, they're never that great, right? Well, Walking Dead came in intent to set the record straight and prove us all wrong by giving us this exceptionally tense, taut, horror scavenger hunt of a game. Far more strategic, far more slow-paced and slow-burn horror than I ever expected it to be. I genuinely thought we'd be going through slashing things up, but I guess a different Walking Dead VR game did that. Saints and Sinners gave us a tight experience that had a great story, loads of tension, loads of terrifying moments, and made me fearful in VR for the first time in a while. Because your weapons break, you really do feel like you always need to be on the lookout for another piece of bottle or knife to really protect yourself, especially when the lights go down, the day gets to its end, and the zombies turn up in huge droves. 
it becomes a horrible mad dash to get the hell out of there. It's, it's a great game and something I genuinely think everyone should play if you've got the stomach for sneaking around and stabbing zombies in the head. In at number eight, we have the video game equivalent of the most amazing redemptive arc in the history of all mankind, No Man's Sky. This game bombed when it released. It wasn't the product everyone wanted. It was an empty game with nothing much to do other than farm a resource, fuel your ship, go to another planet, start the process again. Flash forward to today, the game is completely different. They've continued to chip away at it and continued to give us experiences that we wanted at launch when No Man's Sky originally came out. The game today is an amazing experience with crafting, base building, multiplayer, planet hopping, space exploring adventures that will stick with you for a very long time. The emergent gameplay here is second to none and experiencing it all in VR is a wonderful, wonderful time. In at number seven, a free game that everyone should have got recently if you purchased a Quest 2 and you've plugged it into your PC, Asgard's Wrath. Asgard's Wrath is basically PC VR's answer to God of War. You explore Norse mythology in a first person VR RPG where sword fighting and just honestly some of the most brutal and rewarding combat I've ever experienced in VR is the main focus of the adventure. Beautiful visuals, chunky, chunky combat, a great storyline, Norse mythology, and some of the most engaging VR gameplay I've played in a very long time. Asgard's Wrath is right up there, one of the very best I've played, and the fact they gave it away for free to all Quest 2 purchases? That's a smooth move. In at number six, what could be more enjoyable than the relaxing, creative energy of Minecraft. Minecraft VR. Minecraft VR is exactly that. It's the entire game of Minecraft, but you play it in VR. You get to walk around those blocky, cubey, cutesy worlds, creating whatever you like with that wonderful Minecraft soundtrack playing. It's the most zen, chill out VR experience I've ever had. And I think it will be the most zen, chill out VR experience I ever have. Because Minecraft is, it just does that for me. I play that game and I get to walk around and craft and explore and get lost in that world for a couple of hours. And experiencing it in VR, where you can play all of the extra content as well, whether that's Jurassic Park, Star Wars, Fallout, whatever pack it may be that you're experiencing, it can be experienced in VR. It's, it's joyous and it's the most immersive, engaging way to play that game. One of the biggest games in the world still completely supported by VR. Perfect. Top five now, in at number five, something I've completely fallen in love with recently, Pistol Whip. Oh my God, I love Pistol Whip. This game makes you feel like an absolute badass in the same way that Beat Saber made you feel like an absolute genius, dancer, rhythm badass. This game makes you feel like John Wick all the time. It has a pumping soundtrack. You shoot people in the time with the music. If you want, you don't have to. You can shoot them off beat as well. But you shoot people as you walk through this psychedelic, endless running location. It feels great to play. And it's one of those great VR games that you can stick anybody in and they'll understand how to play it. It's so simplistic in the way it executes its gameplay mechanics, but it does so perfectly. The music is amazing. It drives you through that level. The visuals are simple, but really engaging. And the mechanics of just shooting people in times of the music, shooting down to reload, oh, it's, you'll be dancing before you know it. You might not be a dancer, but you'll feel your legs starting to go. You'll be dancing your way through those courses. Pistol Whip is a joy, and it just received a huge free update. The devs really care about the product, and it should be played by everyone. A genuine contender for one of the best VR games out there. In at number four, probably everyone's first true VR love. Between this and Beat Saber, I guess, Super Hot. Super Hot probably was my actual first VR experience. I went to a friend's house who was lucky enough at the time to have an OG, I believe it was a Quest, might have been a Vive, and we spent the afternoon playing Super Hot. And I never looked back. Super Hot is so simple in what it does, and the recurring theme for the top five games on this list is that they do what they do so well, but what they do is actually quite simple. Super Hot pits you up against red dudes. Just red things, genderless red creatures that come for you. 
and you have to shoot them. And it's as simple as that. But if you move quickly, time moves quickly. If you move slowly, time moves slowly. So it immediately becomes a matrix shootout, a John Wick shootout. You're dodging bullets, picking up ashtrays, throwing them at enemies, grabbing a gun, shooting an enemy, grabbing his gun. Yeah, super hot, although it's an older VR game, still holds up today and is still something that every VR gamer should play. Absolutely fantastic. I really hope we get a full-fledged sequel at some point in the future. In at number three, everyone saw it coming, it's Beat Saber. Beat Saber is a juggernaut of VR gaming. It exploded onto the scene and it shows no signs of slowing down. Even myself who's played that game to death will jump in every now and then for a, for a quick go because it's so rewarding to play. And again, like the other two games previously, it's so simplistic. It just handles those mechanics so perfectly. Chop blocks. Chop the right colored block in the right direction in time with the beat. Again, anyone can play this. I could put my mum in this game and she would understand what she needed to do. She may have never played VR before, but this makes sense because it's so simple. Everyone likes music, everyone likes to dance, and everyone likes lightsabers, right? Cutting blocks in time to the music with lightsabers is just a genius idea and I can see why it's had such lasting appeal. One of the best VR games out there. Down to the last two, in at number two, because we all know what's gonna be number one. In at number two is Boneworks. What a fantastic game. The guys at Stress Level Zero pulled off something absolutely mind-blowing with Boneworks. And I have a feeling that Boneworks would be far bigger than it is if it didn't release so close to the number one VR game on this list. Now the reason Boneworks places so high on this list is because I genuinely believe it to be a fantastic work of VR, a, a wonderful technical achievement. It's the first VR game I played where I felt like I was actually there in that world. Everything felt like it had the right physics. Everything felt as heavy as it should do. Wielding a crowbar didn't feel that unwieldy. I could really smack stuff. But then when I grabbed a big two-handed ax and I tried to hold it with one hand, it felt heavy. The way you approach that game, the way you approach the world is entirely up to you. The solution to a puzzle, it doesn't have just one solution. You can use the physics within that sandbox to tackle anything in any way that you want. It was a wonderful experience. Um, and it's something I still revisit now just to enjoy the crazy physics based gaming that they've pulled off in this title. And it was bested just a couple of months later by another title. Here's some games that didn't quite make my top 20 list, but still definitely deserve your attention. My honorable mentions.
In at number one, could it be anything else? Probably not. Half-Life Alex. Holy swear word. Half-Life. They came back. Valve did it. And I don't know why I doubted that they would. Because it's what they do. I remember when Valve announced Half-Life 2 and they showed off a section of gameplay. And I remember being quite young and watching it with my brother and watching the physics of Gordon hitting bits of wood with a crowbar and watching the wood break apart in the right way. And I remember looking at that and thinking, they've just changed gaming in a huge way. Valve do that. That's what they do. And they've come back here and they've given us a VR experience that has raised the bar to a ridiculous level for all upcoming VR titles and future VR titles. They've shown us what VR can be. An engaging story in an exceptionally realistic looking world with wonderful physics, expressive, emotional, filled characters, and just a sandbox that's almost endless in terms of modding support and tools for creators and players out there. Half-Life Alex is the real deal. It's the first truly triple A VR game and it should be played by anyone who has the capacity to play it because it is right up there. A wonderful experience that's made all the better if you have experienced the Half-Life games before it but if you haven't it's still something you need to play today. <sighs> that brings us to the end of the list. I really wanted to make a list about just the best VR games I've played because I truly believe that VR is a piece of technology and part of the gaming landscape that deserves to be far bigger than it is, that deserves to have more attention, more AAA titles, and just more developers engaging in the product, the software, the technology, and just believing in it more, as much as the fans believe in it. There's a reason VR fans are so passionate, it's because they can see the potential in the technology that we've got. And as it gets more and more affordable, I do believe we'll start to see more and more fantastic experiences coming from the bigger developers and indie developers alike. But for now, if you're on the fence and you're looking in at VR thinking, is it worth getting? Are there enough experiences that are gonna keep me going? This list is just a handful of the best. I genuinely believe them to be the best, but there are far more experiences out there. I urge you to jump in, take a risk on VR and join us. It is a absolutely mind-blowing experience and it's getting better by the day. Hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. I'll see you soon for another one. Take care.